This is our first installment of CTMU Math, the Mandelbrot set, Pi, and Creation. And just a warning, not everything in this video is, has yet been justified by pure mathematics. The first half is basically provable and established, whereas the latter half is exploratory and conceptual in nature. But that's where the fun lies, so let's get into it. Uh, maybe God lies there too. So. The Mandelbrot set is if you take the set of all the numbers in the complex plane, with the x-axis being real numbers and the y-axis being complex numbers, and take c squared plus c over and over again, so then you get c, c to the 10 plus c to the 9, ad infinitum, c to the 100 plus c to the 99, and if you continue this process, c to the infinity plus c to the infinity minus 1, the number always stays smaller than or equal to 2 if it's included within the Mandelbrot set. That's what defines inclusion in the set. So how people draw pictures of the Mandelbrot set you may have seen some of these is essentially by taking how many steps is required for numbers to go above two using this process with the black portion representing inclusion within the Mandelbrot set and the colors representing some degree of non-inclusion how many steps it takes using the c squared plus c method to get past two with your number and so one one over four 0 0.25 is the largest real number included within the Mandelbrot set and we'll be sticking with real numbers because with complex numbers as you might expect it gets more complex and so we can add epsilon a really small value uh, that's what epsilon is it's just a generically small value and two one point four two one one over four and see how many steps it takes to go past two and these calculations are from number files pi in the Mandelbrot set video so if we get um, if we set epsilon to 1, then cn plus cn minus 1, function we discussed earlier, takes two steps to get plus 2, c equals 0 0.25 plus 1, c squared equals, c squared plus c, if we set c to 1.25, it's 2.8125, it's outside of the Mandelbrot set within two steps. And as we set epsilon closer and closer to the boundary of the set, so 0 0.25 plus 0 0.0001, and then point zero 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 one and so on and it, it something incredibly weird and cool starts to happen it starts out at it takes two steps to get to non-inclusion um, and then a little later two orders of magnitude multiply it by one one hundredth um, and it takes 30 steps and then divide that by a hundred and it takes 315 steps and divide that epsilon by a hundred it takes three thousand one hundred and forty steps and so this is something, you, I'm sure you can see what's happening here at greater and greater resolution. If you put a decimal after the three after the three place, this function is tending towards, in terms of the steps, closer to the value of pi. And in, in the words of a YouTube commenter I came across researching for this video, pi is like that one uncle who just shows up out of nowhere in every scenario. But it, and th there's a reason for that and because it's related to the fundamental mathematics of reality. But here's where it gets really, really interesting. So the terminus of this is that as we approach exactly 0.25 on our number graph, so as x approaches 0.25 from the right, the we get we set so that's setting epsilon to zero to find out how many steps it takes for the function to essentially generate its own geometry, to generate its own boundary. Um, at its own, so at its boundary, at 0.25, as we get closer and closer to that, we end up with the answer that approaches pi times infinity. And so the thesis of this video is that this is not just a coincidence, but that pi and infinity, these two values, are fundamentally related to the geometry and self-generation, not only of the Mandelbrot set, but of the mathematical structure of our universe. And this is the interesting thing about the Mandelbrot set, that it is its own boundary. If you zoom into the boundary right outside the black space, which represents inclusion in the Mandelbrot set, we see more crystals, and we can, t can continue this infinite times. It's turtles all the way down. This fractal pattern is continually generating copies of its own structure at every level. So here's a visual representation of the Mandelbrot sets. It's trippy, right? And so the set possesses a complexity that never precisely repeats. All of these patterns as we zoom in are different. And it, but it doesn't get lower resolution as we zoom in like you'd expect, but the opposite. We get ever finer recursive detail at increasing magnification. And just like pi, it's just like pi and other irrational numbers whose digits never repeat themselves. Everywhere is different, everywhere in the same. And according to Chris Lang and according to CTMU, this is actually the relational structure universally of reality. Sin divionesis, sameness in difference. Everywhere is different, everywhere is the same. So it's continually generating, you know, different structures with the same fractal syntax. And so that's really interesting. Um, 
So again, the Mandelbrot set is its own boundary. So I, I get, as you zoom into the boundary of the Mandelbrot set, it creates copies of itself. And again, the man, and as we know from the late great physicist John Wheeler, whom Chris Langan cites frequently, the boundary of a boundary is zero. This is a topological fact that a point is the boundary of a boundary, and points are by definition zero-dimensional entities, and thus have no boundaries. You know, some Paul just now are saying that the that a point actually geometrically is its own boundary. We, you can discuss that, but anyway, it's a it's it's the boundary of a boundary, and the boundary of a boundary is zero. But in the CTMU, through advanced topological and descriptive containment methods, zero, the boundary of a boundary, is redefined to mean zero in, informational constraint, unrestrained potential, the ontic ground state of the universe, the inception of all of existence, unconditioned being, prior to any self-manifestation. So the Mandelbrot set self-generates from this inception point, from, um, from x equals 0 0.25. And so it couples its minimal, the bottom turtle, so to speak, if you zoom in infinitely, to its maximal, if you zoom out infinitely, the top turtle in this infinite regress structure. So it couples the minimal and maximal structure to the operation of self-generation from a pre-geometric form of its being. And that's the, that's the essence of a fractal, and it's also the essence of our universe. The set includes every such function that doesn't regress to infinity. So in a qualified sense, it's infinity collapsing on itself to generate a finite order set. And this is what creation is. It's the restriction of ontic potential. It's infinity terminating on itself in order to generate mathematical and physical structures. This is quite a bit like the creation of the mathematical and physical universe, which are coupled. And I under and I think understanding these infinite ordered sets which converge on pi might have something to do with what Eric Weinstein is trying to do with his geometric unity theory, that we can actually identify and merge the geometries of our theories of quantum mechanics and relativity and we get a synthesis and see what actually gives lattice to our universe, what both of these theories are really describing. And so, but this can't be done according to Langan geometrically, but only logical geometrically. Reality is a coupling of language slash logic and geometry. So if I'm correct, reality is communicating its, with itself on how it wants to self-model based on the fundamental or something akin to the fundamental Mandelbrot set geometry, which is the constraints put on future states. As the universe evolves and explores, it has to continue to be logically coherent. The circumference over the diameter of the pi always has to stay 3.14159, etc., or else reality would cease to be coherent and would fall apart. So I think this is why people also report while they're having, you know, these intense mystical experiences or maybe on, you know, Say on psychedelic drugs, the perception of an infinite order crystal, a periodic pattern, a fractal experience as subsuming one's individual identity. I don't think this is a hallucination in the classical sense so much as it's a gap between the non-terminal and terminal forms of one's consciousness such that you can see an intimation of the true geometry of the universe. Um, in Digital Archaeology, a channel which I highly recommend you check out, his series on the significance of pi where he takes the Hebrew letters corresponding to the digits of pi and lines them up with passages and ideas from scriptures. He says that the three digit in pi is the inception of all of existence. This is because three is an instance of ontic closure, systemic self-duality. Creator, creation, and creativity is what's required for creativity. Love or beloved and love is what's required for love. Antithesis, thesis, and synthesis is what's required for the synthesis. It's one alternating through these three phases of its own existence. And then the decimal expansion of pi, 0.14159, etc., the female aspect of God, the hokma, the divine wisdom, which unfolds in the blueprint of reality, this is what's remaining. And so you can see there's this great symbolism in the decimal expansion of, of pi. It's what's remaining. It's the irrational, the incomplete, in a sense. Creation as conceived separately from God's self-subsistence. It's why God's goodness, his telesis, and his being, his energy, has to spill over into the created world. It's too much to subsist in itself. God's light as a generic and undifferentiated quant is insufficient to himself. He's too great not to create because that's his very identity as creator. And the way the Jewish mystics actually say this is that God looked into the primordial Torah, which is identified with the Hokma, with the divine wisdom, in order to create existence. And digi digital archaeology actually takes this literally. He says that God has revealed certain symbolic and numeric associations through the system of gematria of the numerical values of Hebrew letters in scripture in the decimal expansion of pi that correspond 
to passages and numbers and scriptures. I can't say if there's if this is true, but there's a good, at least symbolic reason why it would be. Tyler Goldstein, the author of Sentient Singularity Theory, actually says that God, mathematically speaking, is an irrational number in a qualified sense, and it has to be with this way because as a self-generating, self-bounded, uncountably infinite personal being, God's essence is resolving a number of seeming paradoxes. How can God's being be both relative to his creation and absolute and uncontingent on anything external to himself? How can you subsist in alternate phases as both the creator and the created? How can you be absolutely transcendent and absolutely imminent? The king and creator of the cosmos who has stooped so low as to have a personal relationship and map himself into every human being. How the totality of existence and beyond could even be a personal being. If this is what it takes to complete the operation of self-generation, creation. And this is what the early inventors of calculus knew as well, that only with infinity distributing its properties over a number line can we have any continuity. We can't have a discrete jump in mathematical qu quantities. If I keep adding digits to 3.14159, I'll never get to 4 or even to 3.2. Finitude and infinity are intimately bound up with one another. This is Zeno's paradox. This is known all the way back to ancient Greek times. We can't ever have a true derivative without this property. We can only approach exact values from both sides of a number line, which is the cop-out method which modern calculus teachers without much philosophical sophistication use. We can never actually reach them. And Chris Langan actually relates trying to explain this to his calculus teacher in college and him responding that, quote, some people don't have the intellectual firepower to be a mathematician, calling him stupid. And there are also good mystical interpretations. On his substack, Eric Hyde's white light, he says reckoning means ratio. Ratio is regard. Its answer is pi, or the ratio of anyone's sphere of reality to the diameter of their internal and external reality, 3.1415926. It's a transcendental psychonomic value, an objective, subjective, transcendental certainty of one's own id reality, or, quote, the part of the mind in which innate instinctive impulses and primary processes are manifest. Its source is light, and it's symbolic until it is witnessed. Pi, according to Hyde, is literally the inception of conscious experience. It's what relates us logico-geometrically and mathematically to the medium in which we're embedded. He continues, It is not for nothing that pi is reckoned to be a transcendental number, and it is also not for nothing that pi is the root of piety, because as Langan has stated, language is mathematical. The circle of our s is our sphere of reality unto God. He quotes Langan, quote, We don't know who Jesus was, but we know who he is. Jesus is the idea of human perfection says Christopher Michael Langan. So, in the Holy Bible, perfect is regarded as whole, as mature, as whole, or whole, the center of which being light. So, in the infinite order of coherence and recursive slash cyclical nature of reality and of God in triune form is reflected in the transcendental psychonomic value of Pi as the embodied ethic, as creation itself, moral living as a terminal representation of divine light, that to which our consciousness is striving towards, the telos, the meaning, the purpose of our incarnation. He ends, quote, everything emerges from a single source, laying in a plenum, an abyss of spirit, which can be observed and understand and understood as being the divine source of all, the abyss, the light that shines forever, laying in, or white light. So let the light shine forth in the darkness, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt, you know, just a warning, not everything in this video has yet been fully justified by pure mathematics. The first half is basically verifiable and established, whereas the latter half is exploratory and conceptual, as I said in the beginning, so take what I say with a grain of salt, but may the peace of our Father in heaven be upon you. Um, until next time, like and subscribe, share with all of your friends. Peace.